According to Aristotle, there is a kind of friendship that exists or ought to exist among all of the fellow members of a community, uh, of a political community. That is to say, it should exist among all of the citizens. The citizens should all have this kind of friendship with one another. And Aristotle calls it political friendship. And it's kind of like the glue of that community. It's what holds the community together. And in his view, if political friendship is lacking, it's very likely that the community will dissolve, that there won't be a genuine community if there isn't political friendship. Let's look at what exactly he has to say about political friendship. <clears throat> he gives an account of it. He says it's unanimity. And the word he uses there, the Greek word he uses there, quite literally means oneness of mind. Unanimity, just, I don't know, in case you're a nerd and interested in this kind of thing, like I am, unanimity is actually a Latin word, and it comes from the words one and, and soul, but soul and mind can mean similar things, right? So oneness of soul, oneness of mind uh, is what the unanimity, that word itself, that's its uh, etymology. Uh, and so and it, it follows the, the Greek, uh, the Greek word. Oneness of mind, that's unanimity. Well, what on earth does that mean? Oneness of mind, it's going to be, I mean, what we would know, what we just know from the word unanimity, some sort of agreement. But uh, I don't know, it can't be any kind of agreement. What if we, you know, we agree that two plus two equals four, but that's not going to be the glue of a political community. So what's, what's, uh, what exactly is this unanimity? Aristotle, thankfully, is more specific. It's having the same opinion, right? That's the sense of uh, uh, unit of oneness of mind. Having the same opinion, not about math or two plus two equals four, or whatever it might be, but about what is good and what should be done, about things to be done. And in particular, what he has in mind is that it's going to be agreement about the common good, the good of the community the good that the community serves and good about what the state should do. And so when we talk, you know, the same opinion about what is good, what he really, about the common good and having the same opinion about what should be done, about what the state should do, about what we should do as a political community. That's what unanimity is. That's what political friendship is. And this kind of agreement is the bond, the glue of the community. It's what keeps the community together. And if you lack this kind of agreement, if there's disagreement about what the common good is and about what the, the political co uh, community should do to achieve the common good, if there's significant disagreement about those things, that's going to break apart the community, is what Aristotle is saying. That's going to be a division among the community. It's going to break the community. It's going to uh, uh, dissolve the community. Think of it again, uh, or use uh, the basketball example again. You're going to get sick of this basketball example. but um, So you had a basketball team. Usually, if you form a basketball team, you don't need to sit down and, you know, write a charter or constitution and this is what we're doing or whatever. No, everybody knows we're trying, we're going to have a team, we're going to play basketball, we're going to win games. That's what we're trying to do. Everybody on a team, or typically most people, are going to have the same idea about what it is we're trying to do together. We're trying to win games. That's what we're doing as a team. But now let's say you have a player who is of a different mind. They don't care about winning games. Their goal is, um, you know, I don't know, it's to get the biggest contract they possibly can. Or their goal is to impress those people over there or whatever, right? It's not winning games. Right? And so they're in a kind of disagreement with the rest of the team. Well, that could very well 
dissolve the team, right? When you have people, or at the very least, make the other team members want to kick that guy out, right? It's detrimental to the community when you have a member who so who acts, um, who behaves in a way that's discordant with the goals of the community. Disagreement about the common good of the community is going to lead to that kind of uh, behavior. It's going to lead to that kind of dis, uh, to, to having members of the community acting at odds with one another. And so lead to the dissolution of the community is Aristotle's idea. Aristotle goes on to give examples of unanimity. Well, how do you know when um, a political community is unanimous? What does that look like? He gives a series of examples. One of his examples, all citizens agree that the offices, that offices, you know, who, the, who, uh, who your rulers are, who your uh, politicians are, we all agree that they should be elected not appointed or not or whatever, right? We all, this is just being an example. He's not necessarily saying this is right or true or anything like that. He's saying, if all of the citizens, citizens agree that political offices should be uh, elected, that people should be elected into them, that's a kind of unanimity. If all the citizens agree that no, they should be appointed by our king over there, well, that's a kind of unanimity. We all agree. We have the same mind about what we're doing together, right? Offices, ruling, that's part of what we're doing together as a community. And when we agree that all the offices should be elected or they should all be appointed or they should all be by lot, uh, signed by lot, well, then that's a kind of agreement that amounts to unanimity. That's Aristotle's example. <clears throat> More generally, you might think of what he, you know, what he's pointing towards here. There's agreement about the proper running of the political community itself about what uh, the best way or the most just way of proceeding is. Offices should be elected, for example. Another example he gives, all citizens agree that we should make a treaty with Sparta, right? So all citizens agree about some matter of foreign policy, about some kind of external action that the, that the political community, that the state, might um, partake in agreement, universal, unanimous agreement about that, unanimity. That's agreement about things to be done. In his last example, all citizens agree that Pittacus, so just, you know, whatever, some guy, all citizens agree that that guy should be the ruler. <clears throat> now, the question is, uh, the, we would want to pose to Aristotle, do we today have political friendship? In, so let's just focus on the United States because that's uh, whatever, that's where we are. Right? Do we agree today that, the or do we think today that the uh, United States has political friendship, that the citizens are unanimous? And when you see some of the examples, uh, it just, you know, they just kind of scream at you. Well, no, not at all. Everybody agrees that Pittacus should be the ruler. That'd be like everybody agreeing that Donald Trump should be the president or that Joe Biden should be the president. Everybody. That's not at all how thing, uh, things are in the United States, you might argue. All citizens agree about some matter of foreign policy. That's not at all how things are. Be it uh, kind of militaristic foreign policy, there's all kinds of disagreement there, although, um, I don't know, somewhat curiously, it's kind of receded in the background over the past 10 to 15 years. People don't seem to care as much about foreign policy as much uh, these days. Um, but there's all kinds of disagreement about that. You might also focus on, uh, I don't know if it's technically foreign policy, but you know, immigration policy. That has to do with how we uh, interact with citizens of other countries and so on. Um, all kinds of disagreement about what the proper way to uh, proceed with regard to uh, immigration is, right? And so you might think, no, the, the United States is not unanimous at all. There is no political friendship. 
<clears throat> that would be a significant problem, according to Aristotle, because what that means, depending on how deep those disagreements are, and it's, you know, they do seem, uh, you might think, rather deep, that means there isn't really a political community that is the United States. Maybe you have two political communities that are fighting with each other all the time. Well, that's bad. That's not any good. Um, that's going to be, then, a defective political community. It's going to be a political community that can't adequately achieve the common good. That's a huge concern. That would be a significant problem. We can return to this uh, once we have a better understanding of the common good and of the political community when, uh, next week when we start looking at the political community. <clears throat> uh, but, and this is what we'll uh, conclude with, you might push back a little bit. Yeah, fine. There's disagreements about these kinds of things. And when you look at Aristotle's examples, yeah, it really looks like the United States might not have political friendship or unanimity. But that kind of masks, or we can be easily uh, distracted from the underlying agreements that uh, people in the United States tend to have. So yeah, they disagree about a, a lot of the particulars. Sure, fine. And what exactly we should do. But there's underlying agreement, you might think, about basic principles. Everybody agrees that Securing and protecting freedom and liberty for all people is one of the primary tasks, if not the primary task, of the political community. There seems to be fairly widespread agreement about that. Not everybody, right? Okay, so, you know, you have uh, whatever. Not everybody's like that. Um, you get a big enough country, you won't find everybody agreeing about anything, right? There are people out there who say two plus two equals five, probably. Um, but more or less, you have universal agreement that uh, freedom and liberty, rights are to be protected. The rights guaranteed to us by the Constitution, at the very least, should be uh, equally protected uh, for all. And, uh, but then the disagreement arises because, well, what exactly does that require? Where exactly are we lacking as far as that goes? What does that equal protection amount to? Um, that's where you start getting the disagreements, somebody might say. It's when you start getting into the details. But in some general sense, there is agreement about what we should be doing, about what the good of the political community is. It's the protection of rights and liberties and so on. That would be a way of pushing back against this idea that we don't have a fully functioning political community. That um, it'd be a way of trying to, uh, trying to show that the United States actually does have some degree of political friendship, despite the uh, rather trenchant disagreements that we find ourselves in.